with all this said, I think it's time for us to toss it over to Elon on the top left. I'm sorry. I'm Elon on the top left. Time for us to toss it to Elon on the top right. Uh, he's got a lot of information about the Ark World Tour uh, finals, and he's going to recap everything that happened there. So, Elon, take it away. Go. Hey, it's me, Elon, on, on the top left. I hope you guys have been well. Uh, I was the one that went to the Ark World Tour finals. So, uh, just in case you were wondering, it was me. Uh, let's chickity chat about everything that went down. First, let's recap the tournament, and then we'll get into like a little bit of a peek behind the scenes. Uh, the tournament was amazing, right? Uh, I'm so happy. I had a I I had a small discussion with Elon on the bottom left, who has this car. Uh, you know, you know the the concept of um, tied uh, tied experiences, right? Where like one person experiences something and someone else who has nothing to do with it experiences that same thing. That's what we have. Uh, so you know, just just letting you know. Uh, but. The tournament itself was amazing. I had a discussion with uh, the broadcast team, and I was like, hey, here's what I don't like about fighting game streams. And it's the fact that they take forever. And you're just sitting there, and it's boring. So the broadcast team, I don't know if they were planning on doing this before my feedback or if they implemented this kind of thing with my feedback, but matches were coming in hot and heavy. And it was awesome, right? It kept the momentum of the weekend going, right? Like, uh, we were... Like, barely had any time for dilly-dallying. We had barely any time for ads. It was so cool, and I loved it. Um, and it felt like a fa player first experience, right? A lot of people were super... Uh, a lot of the players were super happy with how everything went. And the tournament went almost flawless, with the exception of the second-to-last match of the day. <laughs> the second-to-last match of the day, uh, we unfortunately had an issue with... Mochi's controller. I overheard what one of the uh, one of the bracket runners was talking to Junior about. Apparently, it seemed like it was a game issue and not necessarily like a controller issue. Where Mochi's set uh, Mochi's uh, button setups reverted back to default after they loaded into the game, right? And that's not cool. So they had to stop. They had to figure out. What happened? They had to check his controller, and then everything went well from there. Um, but that was like the only big hangup. Everything else went so smooth, and everything else was so cool. Um, the the way they did, you remember? Do you guys remember how I talked about my ideal streaming setup, or like my ideal stage setup, right, where you have the players here and the commentators here? That's what they did. And it was so cool. Like from a presentation point of view, the one thing that I think. And this is, this is like my criticism, right? Um, the one thing that I think could have been a little bit better is camera placement. Because there was a lot of cameras that were like right in front of the, of the hosts. So it was difficult to connect with them from sitting in the audience. However, the fact that the host saw the crowd, the host spoke to the crowd, right? The host saw the players, the host spoke to the players. That is the kind of stuff I want to see from fighting game streams. And I'm not just saying this because I work for the company that did it. I'm saying this because that's legit what I've wanted. You can even go back to when we talked about what a, my ideal setup for Evo would be, or my ideal stage setup would be, and it's with the commentators facing both the players and the crowd. So having them there, looking at the crowd, uh, feeding off of the energy of the crowd, and looking at the player and fe players and feeding off the energy of the players is so important. It's so important because having them disconnected, like... The commentators are basically the liaison between people at home and the tournament, right? The commentators are the people who are bringing people from home into the tournament. The fact that the norm is to separate the commentators and like either put them behind curtains or behind something or like put them very far away from the crowd, I think does no service to the viewers at home and it does no service to like the people watching at, at the venue, right? So having that be a thing and seeing how well that worked is validating to me. So that's all I'll say about. It. But uh, with that said, let's talk about the actual tournaments. DNF, some amazing matches. I was so happy to see Lost Soul there. I was so happy to also see Nanpon like beating the shit out of everybody with Striker. 
until he ran into Goichi. I'm so happy for Goichi, though. Goichi came in, cleaned up house, didn't even lose, like, stayed in winner's side the entire time, just cleaned it up with Crusader and Swiftmaster. Uh, that Grand Finals was a little bit tough to watch just because it was Goichi just beating the shit out of Nampon. <laughs> Nampon was not able to get in. Um, it, it was a little disheartening to watch for, like, if you were on Nampon's side. However, whew, Goichi is taking the lion's share of that 100,000 smackaroos. He's taking 50 grand home, which is a hell of a lot of money. Nampon took second, and then we had, I believe, Kubo took third after beating the crap out of uh, Yusong Cha. Yusong Cha playing Ghost Blade was awesome. Um, but seeing Kubo just, like, completely dismantle that man's brain, it, it was it's literally like a grappler situation. It's probably what's going to happen with Geef in Street Fighter Six, right? Just dismantling Yusong Cha's brain in front of everybody. <laughs> uh, so that was cool. Um, seeing a seeing a couple of the UK representatives there uh, and a couple of the European representatives there, K Top from Greece was cool to watch them play. Uh, Mystic Smash was cool to watch them play. Uh, it was awesome. It was awesome. I'm a fan. We'll, we'll talk about like the production and all the intro stuff after the we recap the tournament. Uh, next was Guilty Gear Strive, and Guilty Gear Strive was a tournament that I've been wanting to see for a long time, right? Guilty Gear was a game that thrived in the pandemic because of rollback. Um, when Guilty Gear came out, we weren't allowed outside of our houses, right? Uh, we were just stuck inside. So the fact that we finally had a full international competition was pretty cool. And it was pretty cool to see a lot of regions talking a lot of trash. <laughs> Americans were talking trash. Europeans were talking trash. He's like, America's the best. Europe's the best. Blah, 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 blah. Mochi didn't give a damn about none of that. He came in, destroyed everybody. So did Tai. So the big Japanese reps uh, were just murdering everybody. I think um, all of most of our U.S. representatives went down fairly quickly. Uh, Umi Show had a very unfortunate weekend, went 0-2. Uh, all in really close sets, right? That's the other thing. It's like all in really close sets. And I'm pretty sure if you run that back like eight more times, it's going to be different every time. We saw Nubenheimer take out, beat the crap out of Mochi the first game, right? Like it was the fastest game of the, the tournament. And then Mochi did the same thing to Nubenheimer on the run back. So unfortunate for Nubenheimer. But man, it's his first like, it's his first year competing. You, just, you remember seeing the, the card where it was like Mochi, years, uh, years as a player, 20. Nubenheimer, years as a player, one. <laughs> It was crazy. It was crazy. Uh, who else? Oh, yeah, and Tempest. Tempest, man. I'm so happy Tempest was there, and I'm so happy he did as well as he did. Um, again, unfortunate that, you know, we couldn't get that uh, American representation, especially from those players all the way to the end. However, uh, I still think their showing was dope as shit. So I'm, I'm really happy um, for everybody uh, for their amazing showing. The European side of things. We had Zando, who... I forgot who was it that said that every time somebody from the Middle East wins, Europe claims them. And then when they don't win, they don't claim them. <laughs> so Zando was a, an EMEA representative this time around, uh, along with Skill. Skill had a hell of a showing. Uh, Skill made it, what, to like fourth or fifth, I think? I think it was fourth. Uh, Zando, unfortunately, had a rough weekend as well, where he went one and two, I think. I think he won over U Umi Show, and then that was it. Um, it got taken out by, I believe, Mochi. Yeah, and he had the very unfortunate, uh, p unfortunate pleasure of running into Ty for his first game. So, and Ty was just on another level this weekend. Uh, it was cool to see a Geo player, man, because I'm a Geo player, and it was cool to see, like, I, I definitely am going to be watching those matches back, because I need some help. But yeah, uh... Then all that culminating into the, the Mochi run back from losers. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I wish I had downloaded uh, B-roll footage of the tournament so it wouldn't just be me talking my face off here. But you guys, you guys saw the tournament. You know what happened. Mochi brought it all the way back from losers, putting Ty in a very dark situation with losing all the way from winners. It was very, it was very unfortunate for Ty. Uh, but Mochi taking it. In, I love the memes that came out 
uh, like the mochi memes where it was just like just mochi like sitting back the way he did. <laughs> uh, it was so funny. Uh, the fact that like he was so laid back, like he, I'm pretty sure it was one of those situations where like on the inside he was freaking out, but in tournament he was literally just sitting like this. So <laughs> it was pretty cool to see. Let's talk about the stuff after the tournament. We'll we'll talk about the player intros when we go to the block grab with Elon on the bottom right. Um, but anyway, let's talk about uh, the the stuff after the tournament. So after the tournament, we got a couple of trailers and a couple of a lot of slides. Which was surprising. So uh, let's take a look. At first, they talked about the DNF stuff, and here it is. And that was it. Uh, that's Spectre. Um, <clears throat> uh, that was Spectre. Uh, they showed a couple of her uh, mechanics, right? Like, she's got, like, air movement. She's got a lot of wacky stuff. They also showed the, the map, uh, like, the, the road map uh, for season one, I think. Uh, and everything is coming out in summer. Uh, which makes me wonder what's been going on at Arxis, right? Because we didn't get a lot of information about DNF Duel, and we haven't gotten a lot of information about Guilty Gear until this tournament. So I don't know if they were saving up or if like things got delayed, which I'm pretty sure they got delayed. I don't know if something happened at Arxis, if they started working on a new game, or if uh, they put all hands into like the Dragon Ball Fighters uh, rollback. Whatever happened there. Uh, I'm glad they're finally getting back to uh, updating the games. Um, the fact that they finally we got somebody from DNF Duel to come up and say, hey, we're working on more stuff, right? And then they showed the graphic with all the roadmap stuff. Um, they also showed uh, some new awakening mechanics. Uh, so that's going to be interesting uh, to to look forward to. And that's all coming out in the summer. So I'm assuming post Evo is when all of this stuff's going to start, which is when Arc World Tour started last time, right? It was the first tournament was Evo. So I wonder if they're going to run the same schedule again. Yeah, it was post-Evo. Um, so I wonder if they're going to run the same schedule again or if they're going to do stuff starting at CEO. Who knows? Um, then next, we got to hear from Lord Daisuke. And uh, we got to see uh, the uh, reveal of... Uh, the new character. We all thought it was going to be Delilah, but boy, were we wrong. Here it is. Meaning. Brother left to me a... Meaning? Bedman? <laughs> Redman? You can't stop it. So move. Dude, I think this is such a dope idea. This is actually like a really, really freaking cool idea. Like I'm a big fan. Look at that overhead. Pow. I never wanted that. This is just an ordinary dream. Sleep well. Damn, that character looks so cool. And it's coming out on April 6th, so we got a date. And then, we're also getting a new uh, stage. And, last but not least, we're gonna have a, another character release in May. So that's gonna be exciting. Oh, I thought this had the... Anyway, we got a teaser for what people are saying might be Asuka. 
A lot of other people were saying it's probably Slayer. I love the story behind this, man. Like, I'm, I'm not somebody who's, like, super in the lore, right? Uh, except, like... The lore for this is awesome. Like, it's, like, Bedman's consciousness is in the bed, and it's protecting Delilah. So, like, so Delilah's there, but you're fighting as the bed. Fighting heedless of its own destruction. So it's, like, breaking apart, but he's just trying to protect his little sister. Dude, that's... It's emotional right there. And apparently, like, Delilah's like Bedman, where she's got powers, and she's supposed to be asleep, but Bedman did something where, like, she's asleep, but she's not asleep... That part, I, I, I'll be honest, that part was way beyond my understanding. But just the fact that Bedman's in the bed, Bedman, uh, and it's protecting uh, Delilah, I think it's pretty dope. <laughs> Dude, yeah, Tap is saying, uh, favorite meme is uh, Delilah looking in shock while Faust Command grabs the bed. I can't wait to see how half of this stuff's going to look. I can't wait to try playing Bedman, you know? Um, a lot of people were speculating that... Um, the mechanic for Bedman is going to be like the eight-way air dash, right? Uh, in Exard, Bedman has, once you jump once, his double jump can go in eight directions. Uh, or his air dash. I, I don't know which one. But anyway, uh, a lot of people are saying that that might be the thing. And we did see a little bit of it, so maybe there's uh, truth to that. We'll see what happens. But yeah, uh, it's exciting. April 6th, which is in, I believe, two weeks today, right? Yeah, two weeks today, three weeks today. So 21 days from this exact day that we are in right now, um, which is Thursday the 16th for those of you that are watching the recorded podcast. Um, and by podcast, I mean talk show. I'm trying to be very aware of saying talk show instead of podcast. Why? I don't know. Uh, but anyway, super exciting, super cool. Um, the reaction in the crowd was cool. Uh, I posted it on our YouTube. I feel like I didn't capture it well enough because people were super excited. But because it was a smaller room, it didn't come across as, like, super exciting. So, uh, either way, super awesome stuff. Super awesome tournament. Last but not least, I'm going to send it over to Elon on the bottom right. He's going to talk about some of the production stuff that they did. Uh, and he's going to, like, peel back the curtain a little bit. And then uh, we're going to do a block grab of all the intros that we got to see this weekend. So, Elon on the bottom right. Take it away. Hey, it's me, Elon on the bottom right. What's up, everybody? So I was, I also traveled to LA this past weekend, uh, and I helped out with the production. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't have as much of a hand on the player intros as I wanted, uh, cause I was working on the interviews and the interviews is, uh, is something that I hope we get to, uh, we get to release, right? Because there's a lot of really, really, really cool stuff that we talked with the players about, um, we talked with Goichi about like, you know, getting older and playing fighting games. We also talked to Goichi about how he started, right? And he gave us like this uh really cool uh insight into like how he began playing and what he does to get better and get so good at so many different games. Um we talked to Lasso about like the rivalry between the US and Japan. Um you heard a little bit about skill. Uh, when he was talking about how he, or like advice that he has for people trying to get serious at fighting games. Um, we heard, I forget if it was Mochi or Gobo, but one of them is an arcade attendant and the TO in Japan. So like we, we have it already, but there was no place for it in the broadcast. So I'm just hoping we get to release it somewhere. Um, I might ask my boss to see if we can release them here because like some of those interviews are very important and I hope they see the light of day. Yeah, I'm going to talk to my boss, see what we can do about those. Anyway, I was stuck doing interviews. However, uh, we had right, right next to me were the player intros. And I want to address something real quick. Just right off the bat, uh, I just want to address this. First, uh, to a lot of people that were saying stuff like, oh, this is cringe, or oh, this sucks. What more do you want? Right? <laughs> like uh stop taking yourself so like stop, stop like being dumb about it it was cool like players got to have a lot of fun we got to have a lot of fun making it and everybody that got to witness that in the venue had a lot of fun so i i think trying to put something down or trying to put someone down because it's easy to put something or someone down is not productive 
to anybody. And it's also not healthy, right? Like being that negative about everything is not very healthy. Two, and I can't believe I have to like actually address this. Uh, a lot of people, I saw a lot of people saying, oh, how can you force players to do this? Players don't want to do this. Nobody's being forced to do anything. <laughs> Literally, nobody's being forced to do anything. We came up with this idea. We had the players go through it. And two, Mr. So one person that I did talk to a little bit uh, had, a, had an interaction with on Twitter, uh, Mr. Crimson. Mr. Crimson did say that, oh, yeah, sometimes players will just do it just to get it out of the way, even though they're uncomfortable. And that's a very valid point. However, the entire time we approached this, it was player first. If a, we, I specifically told both of our directors who were directing those, if a player isn't doing it or if a player isn't comfortable and you pick up on that, just go to plan B. And which we did with a couple of players, right? Uh, at the end of the day, everybody that I've seen had a blast doing it. Right. Uh, I saw Goichi posted about how fun he, how much fun he had. Nampon posted about how much fun they had. Um, like everybody that was there and that did it had a good time. Right. Um, there were a couple players, of course, that were either too overwhelmed or like weren't like there was a language barrier and we couldn't do it. It was a challenge, right? Because at the end of the day, like there was a language barrier for a couple players. Um, it's that. I think I have a photo of it on my phone. Um, the set that we made is, like, if you aren't used to that kind of stuff, it's overwhelming, right? Because there's a lot of lights, there's cameras, and there's, like, stuff flying above your head. Uh, it's a little bit intimidating. So not everybody was comfy, and rightfully so. And even with that said, we still did our best to take care of everybody. Um, let me pull up a photo here. I, I should have probably uploaded this to... Uh, my computer instead of just showing it to you here, but I don't know how well you guys can see that, right? Like it's a bunch of lights, like these, uh, these vertical lights, and then there's a bunch of lights on the ground, and we had a fog machine. Like it was awesome, um, but that stuff can be overwhelming, right? So I made sure to let both of the directors know that if somebody was being overwhelmed or if somebody was just like not into it or not getting it, just have them do normal poses, which some players did. And that's perfectly fine. Um, however, the players that were super into it were super into it. Like, got really... However, the players that were down, like, got really into it. And I think the, the end product was really cool. Um, here is a picture of the table of props that we had. So we had our art department um, source a couple of these. And some of these they straight up bought and painted. So, like... The, the grappler gloves were bought and painted. The striker gloves were bought and painted. We found the ranger gloves. We found a belt for Kubo. We found a hat that they then painted, right? We had two swords, one for, uh, one for Nubenheimer, for Nago, and one for Yusong Cha for uh, Ghostblade. Um, we had even more props, too. Um, here's the other half of the props. Like, we had the... I don't know how... What, Excuse me, I don't know how well you guys can see that, but we had like the, the soul headband and the soul belt. We had the happy chaos glasses. We had the hitman glasses and gloves. Like, it was dope. It was dope. And I'll be honest, like, I was nervous as shit when I came up with this idea. To the credit of my team, the team, the content team that I work for, I'm usually an editor, right? But the fact that I was like, hey, I'm a subject matter expert on this. I'm an FGC guy. Let me take, let me take the lead in the uh, creation or like in the creative process on this. And they did, right? Like, so that was like the crazy thing is like, I never would have expected them to be like, yeah, sure, take the reins, right? Because I've so many times in a, a professional setting have I run into this exact situation where either I or someone else who is not in a leadership position is more of a subject matter expert than leaders, and then the leaders just don't take anything into account. The fact that my team was like, sure, you help produce this shit was awesome, right? And that's why we were able to get something like so off the wall like this. Um, and like, uh, so like it was challenging and it was hella fun. 
our editors were editing this shit like overnight to make sure we had it for the next morning. Like we shot this stuff on Friday and the tournament was on Saturday. Uh, so that's the other thing. Like we had editors working uh, the la like the three weeks leading up to the event to make sure that we had like a good setup for um, we had a good setup for media day so that like we can just like record these and spit those out. Unfortunately, because things happened so close to the deadline, we didn't get all that we wanted, right? I found Leo's swords. I found somebody who would make them, but it was six weeks to make. Um, uh, what else? Like, I, uh, um, like, I, I wanted to also get, like, a, a plushie for, uh, for Lost Soul and for Ty, right? Or for TY, I'm sorry. Um, I wanted to get them plushies, but we didn't have enough time to get them. Um, so unfortunately, a couple of players, we weren't we weren't able to get everything for everybody, and it sucks, right? Um, that was like the one part that like really hurt me because I wanted everybody to have a good time, and unfortunately, some players got left out of that, um, which you know I feel bad about. However, if I get the opportunity to do this again, hopefully that's not going to happen. Yeah, uh, and like the the people shooting and the people directing it, like we we nailed down a lot of good stuff, and even the stuff that didn't necessarily go right, the next time we're gonna get it right. So I can't wait to do more of this shit. Right? If we get to work with Ar Arxis again, if I get to do any of this again, it's gonna be hopefully a lot better. Um, but at the end of the day, I'm happy that the players enjoyed it. I'm happy that the people at the venue enjoyed it, and I'm happy that a lot of uh, people watching enjoyed it. If you're somebody who's shitting on it, if you're somebody who's like, oh, I can't believe you would force the players to do that, talk to the players that did it. Just talk to the players that did it, right? Like, I can't, like, who was it? Was Latif who was like, oh, I wouldn't do this. Stop taking yourself so seriously, man. We're playing video games. It's fun. Be fun. Don't be boring. That, that's like my whole thing is like tournaments have become so boring to watch. Having shit like this is so important because it keeps people tuned in. It, it lets people see more of the player. It lets people see more of the player's personality, right? Like Nanpon. Nanpon is a perfect example. Like when he started getting really into it, dude, he was, he was so... I, I walked out of an interview room seeing him doing the poses. It was awesome. Zando. Zando brought his own fucking hat. <laughs> Zando brought his own hat and like he did the Calvados. It was so dope. I wish we could have gotten him the swords, but we, you know, there's not enough money or time. Um, but like getting to see a little bit more of the players like that is so important because at the end of the day, yes, you are there to play. Yes, that is what you're doing. However, however, if we're really going to buckle down into what you're there for, all of this is just marketing. Right at the end of the day, all of this is marketing for Arxis, whether you like it or not. They're putting up money. They're putting you there. You're there to. You're there to make the game look good. And here's the thing: the other reason why the FGC is so small compared to a lot of other big esports is because people don't know the players. Right? You can see these players play. But you get zero interaction with them, right? As somebody, uh, like, as somebody who travels, like, I travel for these tournaments, I barely get to interact with a lot of the top players, right? And the top players that I do know are great people, but we never get to see shit like that. Not everybody streams, not everybody can stream, right? Um, so, like, getting to know the players in this type of fashion, I think, is super duper important. And you saw, like, a lot of people were like, hey, I want this person to win because their intro was so good. Like, that's connecting players with people watching. And that's a big problem that we have in the FGC is not a lot of people are able to get connected with the people who are playing. Mostly because we watch the game, we watch them play, and then they go off screen. So, all this to say, sharing, putting yourself out there, sharing yourself a little bit more with the world is never a bad thing. And if you're somebody who's trying to turn it into a bad thing, stop it. It's good for everybody. It's satisfying. Even just creating this stuff was super satisfying. I can't even imagine what it's like to be a player and like do all this stuff and then get to see your intro afterwards. Like I, I, I sp every player that I got a chance to speak to, everybody was so happy they got to do it. Right? I got to speak with Skill, Zando, Umisho, uh, Lost Soul. I talked a little bit with. Um, 
with Goichi. Uh, we needed a translator, of course, but, uh, you know, everybody was so happy to do it. So if you're somebody who didn't go and is offended for the players, go outside. <laughs> Literally, just go outside. Stop taking everything so seriously. Stop, like, being pissed at everything. Just have some fun. Fuck. <laughs> After this rant, I apologize. Um, I did go on a little bit of a tangent. But, like, some of that stuff kind of, like, it hurts, right? Um, especially when we're, like, trying to do stuff that's cool. We're taking into account, like, all the players. We're doing all this stuff. And people just have these assumptions that, like, come out of nowhere. And if you're somebody who is, like, feeling good about putting other people down, then, like, you're not going to be happy for too long. So, that's all I have to say about that. Either way, production, great. Players, great. The intros came out great. 